And in the third year from the birth of Moses, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet when Alphoranet, the queen, was sitting at his right, and Bathia at his left, and the lad Moses was lying upon her bosom. And Balaam, the son of Beor, with his two sons, and all the princes of the kingdom, were sitting at table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head, and took the crown from the king's head, and placed it on his own head. And when the king and princes saw the work which the boy had done, the king and princes were terrified, and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said unto the princes who were before him at table, Would speak you, and would say you, O ye princes, in this matter, and what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Balaam, the son of Beor, the magician, answered before the king and princes, and he said, Remember now, O my lord and king, the dream which thou didst dream many days since, and that which thy servant interpreted unto thee. Now therefore this is a child from the Hebrew children, in whom is the Spirit of God, and let not my lord the king imagine that this youngster did this thing without knowledge. For he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him, although he is yet a child. And with wisdom has he done this, and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Egypt. For this is the manner of all the Hebrews to deceive kings and their nobles, to do all these things cunningly, in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely thou knowest that Abraham their father acted thus, who deceived the army of Nimrod, king of Babel, and Abenelech, king of Geor, that he possessed him of the land of the children of Heat and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and that he descended into Egypt and said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister, in order to mislead Egypt and her king. His son Isaac also did so when he went to Geor and dwelt there, and his strength prevailed over the army of Abinelech, king of the Philistines. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble in saying that Rebekah, his wife, was his sister. Jacob also dealt treacherously with his brother Esau and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went then to Padam Aram to the house of Laban, his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him, and fled away, and returned to the land of Canaan to his father. His sons sold their brother Joseph, who went down into Egypt, and became a slave, and was placed in the prison house for twelve years, until the former Pharaoh dreamed dreams and withdrew him from the prison house, and magnified him above all the princes in Egypt on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when God caused a famine throughout the land, he sent for and brought his father and all his brothers and the whole of his father's household, and supported them without price or reward, and brought the Egyptians for slaves. Now therefore, my lord king, behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Egypt to do according to their deeds, and to trifle with every king, prince, and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up, and take away the government from thy hand, and the hope of Egypt perish, 
after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Egypt and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy, as thou didst say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and they came before the king, and an angel of the Lord came amongst them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Hebrew boy who is in the house has done, and thus has Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said as follows, Before all the wise men of Egypt, and before the king and the princes, If it please the king, let the king send for men, who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire, and place them before the child. And if the child shall stretch forth his hand, and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal, then shall we know that it was not with knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princess. So the king did according to the word of the angel of the Lord. And the king ordered the onyx stone and coal to be brought and placed before Moses. And they placed the boy before them, and the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of the Lord took his hand and placed it upon the coal, and the coal became extinguished in his hand. And he lifted it up, and put it into his mouth, and burned part of his lips, and part of his tongue, and he became heavy in mouth and tongue. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moses had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. So the king and princess refrained from slaying the child. So Moses remained in Pharaoh's house growing up, and the Lord was with him. And whilst the boy was in the king's house, he was robed in purple, and he grew amongst the children of the king. And when Moses grew up in the king's house, Bathia the daughter of Pharaoh considered him as a son, and all the household of Pharaoh honored him, and all the men of Egypt were afraid of him. And he daily went forth and came into the land of Goshen, where his brethren, the children of Israel, were, and Moses saw them daily in shortness of breath and hard labor. And Moses asked them, saying, Wherefore is this labor assigned unto you day by day? And they told him all that had befallen them, and all the injunctions which Pharaoh had put upon them before his birth. And they told him all the counsels which Balaam, the son of Beor, had counseled against them, and what he had also counseled against him, in order to slay him when he had taken the king's crown from off his head. And when Moses heard these things, his anger was kindled against Balaam, and he sought to kill him, and he was in ambush for him day by day. And Balaam was afraid of Moses, and he and his two sons rose up and went forth from Egypt, and they fled and delivered their souls and betook themselves to the land of Cush. And Moses was in the king's house, going out and coming in. The Lord gave him favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, 
and in the eyes of all the people of Egypt, and they loved Moses exceedingly.